I thought, let me be to someone else what no one was to me. Let me send a message to that kid, maybe someplace far overseas, maybe somewhere deep inside, a kid who's being targeted at home or at school or in the streets, that someone is watching and listening and caring, that there is an us, that there is a we, and they are not alone. I waited until my family went away for the weekend, and I was alone in the house, and then I swallowed a bottle of pills. I don't remember what happened over the next couple of days, but I'm pretty sure come Monday morning, I was on the bus back to school, pretending everything was fine. And when someone asks me if that was a cry for help, I say no, because I told no one. You only cry for help if you believe there's help to cry for. And I didn't. I wanted out. I wanted gone. I wasn't born in this country. I didn't grow up in any one particular religion. I have a mixed race background and I'm gay. Like many of you here tonight, I grew up in what I would call survival mode. When you're in survival mode, your focus is on getting through the day in one piece. And when you're in that mode at five, at 10, at 15, there isn't a lot of space for words like community, for words like us and we. There's only space for I and me. That feeling of being singular and different and alone carried over into my 20s and into my 30s. When I was 33, I started working on a TV show that was successful not only here in the States, but also abroad, which meant over the next four years, I was traveling to Asia, to the Middle East, to Europe, and everywhere in between. And in that time, I gave thousands of interviews. I had multiple opportunities to speak my truth, which is that I was gay, but I chose not to. Asked to choose between being out of integrity and out of the closet, I chose the former. I chose to lie, I chose to dissemble. Because when I thought about the possibility of coming out, about how that might impact me and the career I'd worked so hard for, I was filled with fear. Fear and anger. And a stubborn resistance that had built up over many years. When I thought about that kid somewhere out there who might be inspired or moved by me taking a stand and speaking my truth, my mental response was consistently, no thank you. I thought, I've spent over a decade building this career, alone, by myself. And from a certain point of view, it's all I have. But now I'm supposed to put that at risk, to be a role model to someone I've never met, who I'm not even sure exists. Several weeks ago, when I was drafting my letter to the St. Petersburg International Film Festival, declining their invitation to attend, a small, nagging voice in my head insisted that no one would notice. That no one was watching or listening or caring. But this time, finally, I knew that voice was wrong. I thought if even one person notices, this letter in which I speak my truth and integrate my small story into a much larger and more important one is worth sending. I thought, let me be to someone else what no one was to me. Let me send a message to that kid, maybe in America, maybe someplace far overseas, maybe somewhere deep inside, a kid who's being targeted at home or at school, or in the streets, that someone is watching and listening and caring. That there is an us, that there is a we, and that kid or teenager or adult is loved. And they are not alone.